It's time now for Call of the Wild, the official weekly coaches show of the Wenatchee Wild. Stay up to date with your team all season long with Call of the Wild. With head coach and GM Bliss Littler, here's the voice of your Wenatchee Wild, Arch Ecker. Hello and welcome to Call of the Wild, your Wenatchee Wild hockey show that's the final one of the season. I'm Arch Ecker with Wenatchee Wild head coach and GM Bliss Littler. Coach, the season came to an end earlier than we might have liked, but you know what? Throughout the season, we talked about at some point we're going to be able to sit back and look at the things that have been accomplished over the year. Well, and now that time is upon us, and as you look back over the season, there are so many things that, I mean, they come springing up to talk about with records being set and accomplishments. And for you, where do you start? Oh. I'm still stinging that uh, I'm other than for this show I'm, I'm just I'm not ready to go there that um, again in the playoffs really you got to have a few things one you have to have a little bit of luck you have to have health you have to have great goaltending and very good special teams and you know we for whatever reason um, a couple of those areas we, we definitely fell short of and I learned a long time ago that yeah you can't control injuries, and I think the injuries had a lot to do um, with the situation we're in, that you can't take anything away from Chilliwack, but we definitely would have liked to be at our best um, at the the biggest time of the year, and uh, that, that just didn't happen. But um, you, you look at those four things, and um, a couple of them didn't happen, and uh, it's unfortunate because this group put together a, a, a very, very special season for us, and I guess if if I have to uh, <clears throat> you know, single out a few things is I believe in the next uh, two weeks to a month we'll end up with 15 to, to 16 Division One college hockey commitments and and that's really that's why the kids come out here that um, as coaches and as fans that. Uh, you know, the most you, 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 you're fired up that you, you want to win a championship, um, but you re- realize that uh, a big part of my job and my the coaching staff's job is to help these players move on to the next level. And um, hopefully for all of them, it's Division One hockey. Uh, if not, you, it's Division Three hockey. And you want them to continue playing, um, but whatever they choose to do next, you want them to be set up to have success in life and um, I know that we had an amazing group of kids that this group is they're going to do amazing things um, whether it's on the ice or off the ice they're they're going to be they're going to they're going to be good husbands they're going to be good fathers they're going to be good people in the community and um, again, I'm, I'm really proud of them uh, that way that they came a long ways as, as young men and like I said we've moved a bunch of kids on to school and <clears throat> Boy, we won a lot of hockey games, um, and I don't know if uh, I've been part of a team that was so dominant at home. That uh, I mean, you have to give the the fans here in, in in Wenatchee. You have to give them a lot of credit for making the the Wolves Den to be the the toughest place to to play in the league. Um, uh, and, and some of the some of the nights just. The plays that were made, um, there are times on the bench that I'd go down to Clarkie or Ruddy and just say, wow, that was nice. Um, and these kids, they, they got along with each other. They battled hard. Um, the compete level in practice is probably the thing that I'll remember most uh, about this group is they love to compete with each other. You know, a lot of teams can tend to get a little <clears throat> cliquish and, you know, groups <clears throat> kind of tend to head off in different directions on a weekend for a, for example like on a Sunday on an off day this group really seemed that they were interlaced in a way that it's pretty unique well again the, it was a veteran laden team and um, sometimes that can be very difficult too it's a different set of problems but the unselfishness that this group had um, and I think that started with uh, our captain that you know he um, when you talk about being a servant leader, that's Rocky. Um, putting other people first, that's <clears> Rocky. Um, and you, then from there you go down to your, your two assistant captains. Um, <clears throat> and if you look at how far Brendan Harris and Chris Jones, how far they've come, 
um, in the four years that, that Brendan's played and the five years that uh, Chris Jones has, has played is people they've they've really turned the corner they're 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 ready for to move on to play college hockey they're ready to move on in their life they they've turned themselves into to to really very very good people that uh, and then from there you move on to the other leaders that we had and like Charlie Combs uh, if you look to, to Chavez um, Brian Williams and um, the the Baker kid. I mean, it, Conzo. I mean, I can go around that whole room of, of veteran hockey players that they had to share. That they, they could have gone to other teams and been first line players in a lot of places, um, but we had to share the puck. We we played. I like to say a year ago we had three second lines. We didn't have a first line here. This past year we had three first lines. It, <clears throat> almost any place in the league, our first three lines. Would, would have given any any first line a run for their money and um, but they shared the, the, you know they shared the credit and they shared the spotlight for the most part um, and then they brought brought along the young players that by the by the end of the year how fun was it to watch uh, Morton Weatherby Souter I mean those kids all I mean they turned into very good hockey players I can't wait to see where they're gonna be next fall that um, and to do that, having a veteran laden team a lot of times when you have only a handful of young players those guys kind of get pushed off the side but not this group they they got included in everything and um you know I'll, I'll, I'll think about how tight this group got you know putting together the team that we just watched compete over the last several months it was almost like a perfect storm mm-hmm. of the veterans that were able to come together because i mean some of those guys probably by rights, maybe they probably should have been playing college already, but for whatever reason, you ended up with, with that veteran-laden crew. And not just veterans, but ones that would mesh well together. It was really kind of a, a pretty unique occurrence in junior hockey. Oh, for sure. I mean, when you think about Brendan Harris, he had no business playing another year of junior hockey. He was ready to go to college. <clears throat> Fortunately, Bemidji State, at that point, they... They did the smart thing, really, and they said, "Hey, he's a, he's a smaller uh, type frame. Um, give him another year to, to build on that body. Let him mature another year. Um, we don't have to bring him in with the team that we have. We can we can let him sit and mature, marinate, whatever you want to call it. Um, and they're they, boy, they're getting a, a knockout player right now. Um, Troy Conzo, like you tell me, he wasn't ready to play college hockey this year." Uh, I mean, you could say Charlie Combs. I mean, these kids were all ready to play, but for one re- reason or another, um, <clears throat> they they end up playing their 20-year-old season, and when that happens, you you don't ask why. You just say thank you, and you, you take them that last year, and um, <clears throat> most of the time it's you're losing players probably before they might be ready. Uh, so when you do get kids that are definitely ready and they get sent back, you feel for the kid, but you also look at it and you convince the kid why it's going to be good for him and then uh you ask for more leadership from him and then you just say thank you and and you and you move on that you that um you're you're kind of given a gift and uh in having a player that theoretically is ready for college and you get him a, an extra year and when you have have a couple of those um you want to take advantage of them and, I, and, and i think we definitely did you got players from this program that are moving on to some colleges that are very highly reputed. Uh, for example, Dakota Raby going to Michigan, and I believe it's our first Wild player to attend that school. But as the Wenatchee Wild as a program begin to start moving kids on to those sort of upper echelon programs, that bodes well not just for the players that are here and that have already got their their heels dug in a little bit, but for kids that are thinking about coming here and for your job as a recruiter. For sure. Dakota is one of the one of the players that I'm probably the most happy for. That to watch how far he's come as a young man and as, as a hockey player. That um, he, when I think about Dakota, I, I just smile. That he's put a lot of time into it. Comes from a, um, an unbelievable family. Uh, I couldn't be more happy that he's going to a big time place like like Michigan. Um, and you're right. The, you have kids that, that, you know, the goal is for the kids to get to college. Um, <clears throat> but you, you also, um, as you get better players, 
um, you'll see you'll see kids go into some of the elite programs, and with that, you you, you look at Slava Demon choosing Denver University. Um, Denver's in the in the Frozen Four. They've been the <clears throat> one of the top college teams in the country all year, and big time place. And um, when you start seeing that, uh, all it means is we're getting better. We're getting better, and um, every time you get a kid like that, uh, eventually it, it 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 breeds more of them. The kids see that that um, hey, you can you can get to the the very elite places um, by playing in, in Wenatchee. You know, there's a lot of kids that get the headlines. They're going to these Division One schools, big name schools. Sometimes there's a stigma about Division Three schools, but <clears throat> realistically. <clears throat> There's some great programs, some great hockey, and top shelf educations that go along with that. So, just because a, a player may, might move on to a Division three school, it's certainly no slight by saying, "Well, they weren't good enough for D one." Because it's not like that. I wanted you to have an opportunity to address that for people that don't know. For sure, uh, I mean that's a hundred percent true. And sometimes, not every kid when they get a scholarship is having a hundred percent of his school paid for. Sometimes. Um, a kid will be offered a place, and he's offered a twenty percent scholarship. Well, the school is fifty-five or sixty thousand dollars a year, and all of a sudden you you start saying, "Well, um, that's a lot of money." And when you you look at the school, and then the kid will say, "You know, I can go to an in-state, an in-state division or division three school." That's got the same education, um, a pretty good hockey player, but Division Three doesn't offer hockey scholarships. They offer academic scholarships, and all of a sudden, a kid can play in his home state and go to school for fifteen to twenty thousand a year. Um, at the end of the day, uh, sometimes those kids look at that and say, "You know what? Um, even though my ego wants me to play Division One hockey, uh, the smart thing to do here is to get this great education." Um, play a little bit closer to home and play at a Division three school that's that's very good hockey. You know, the last thing to talk <clears throat> about here is we're in our final episode of Call of the Wild, but people, some people tend to think that, well, your season's over, it's time to bust out the golf clubs. It's not like that. This is a 12-month <clears throat> process, so maybe you can <clears throat> kind of help folks understand what happens <clears throat> when the games stop and the summer begins. Well, um, Boy, you're, you're exactly right. The, the recruiting is, it's a 12-month deal, but it, it, the, you, you just don't stop recruiting. Um, but uh, recruiting on the coaching side, that's that's the main thing. We'll have three, uh, we'll have, we'll have, we'll have uh, three tryout camps um, throughout the summer, and then uh, I believe it's August 21st, the players report back. We'll play a couple weeks of exhibition hockey, and, and then... Um, the, the middle of uh, September, I'm, I'm sorry, I think it's September 8th is, is opening night, whether we're at home or on the road, I'm not sure yet. Uh, so you have about five months to to go out, recruit, and put the best hockey team you can on the on the ice. Um, and you can see with the number of kids that we're moving on, uh, we have a lot of work to do. Now, Coach Redrood and Coach Clark and uh, Merrick Ellison, our, our, our main scout, they've, they've done a great job at yeah, we, we, we talk to kids every, every week. We have a call list that <clears throat> we divide up of X amount of kids, and every two weeks we, we make sure that that list is divided. We call kids, and um, then two weeks later I may have talked to Johnny, and then you're going to talk to him, and then Chris is going to talk to him, and then Rick's going to talk to him. And so we, we're trying to build relationships. So when it comes time to the kid choosing where he's going to play, hopefully Wenatchee's right on top of the list. But um, So between recruiting Tryout camps, um, those are the big things uh, to, to actually get the players. <clears throat> but there's so much more. Once the schedule will be done, oh, I think it's uh, the meeting is June 8th, 9th, 10th, something like that. Um, the marketing stuff, well, you sat in on it today. The, the people are out right now renewing season tickets. We're out trying to renew <coughs> corporate sponsors. Um, <clears throat> May 1st, we'll start selling new season tickets for, for the following year. You'll be out selling uh, radio advertising. and um, Katie's trying to get new new corporate sponsors. Uh, Chris Clark, 
we'll we'll work on you're always trying to to add billet families that I think that's the one thing in Wenatchee that we do here better than any place I've ever been is is the billet program that we have amazing families for these kids to live with but you always are you always are looking for new families that people do it for a few years and uh, maybe they they want to break um, some move jobs whatever so you're always looking for new families and with with our development teams we have three development teams which is another 60 kids and 20 plus beds for the u18 team <clears throat> um, so it's it, there's a whole bunch that goes on there once the schedule's done then you, you start working on all your road trips you're looking <clears throat> when you're, you're looking to make sure the the bus is all set all tuned up and ready to go where it's safe and uh, <clears throat> you have the hotel rooms booked, meals booked, uh, ice time on the road booked. Um, <clears throat> in in May, we'll order all of our equipment uh, for the year. June, we'll order all of the apparel for the for the year. You'll <clears throat> we'll meet with the strength coach, um, see anything there's new and updated. And, uh, <clears throat> I mean, it's just it it just doesn't stop. That year, <clears throat> you know, I, I like to tell people that it actually slows down once the players <laughs> get here because it's kind of Groundhog's Week that. Either you're at home or you're on the road, and if you're at home, it's kind of the it's practice Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, play Friday, Saturday. Generally, we give them Sunday off. Um, if you travel, it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You leave Thursday, play Friday, Saturday, have Sunday off, and it's you, you get into a routine. And well, in the summer, it's <clears throat> all the preparation <clears throat> to uh, to get ready to to field the team in the fall. There, there's a lot of work to be done. Um, and then usually what happens, you're, you're pretty, you're feeling pretty good. And then middle of August, a great opportunity comes for a staff member. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that staff member gets a job at the next level, and you're so excited for them. And then it's, oh, now I got to replace that that guy. <laughs> you know, we got three weeks to do it. But lucky we have a great city in Wenatchee, Washington, where we're people will come here and the, we're fortunate to work for great owners and in David and Lisa White um, that, that has a good reputation for the organization so that people want to want to come and work here so uh, but that's generally how it goes is you get everything in line you get the billet set up and and then all of a sudden you lose a you, you lose a staff member and but that's that's good you want to lose staff members at least for the right reason where they're moving up to, to bigger and, and better things so and that's part of our part of the, the job here too is Besides the besides the players, um, I don't know, Arch. If the LA Kings called tomorrow, um, I'm guessing you're gonna say, "Smitty's, I love you. You have the best breakfast in town." But um, you're heading to LA. If I'm working for the LA Kings, I can probably afford to fly back into Smitty's for, <laughs> for, a, for a breakfast now and again. <laughs> yeah, but Arch, you know that's what that's my point though. Is that um, you know a year ago. A year ago, about this time, we were sitting here, and uh, Don West got offered um, a life-changing job for him uh, at the radio station to do his own show. And um, you know what? David White didn't miss a beat. He said, "Hey, Don, that's awesome for you. That's awesome. It's better for your family, and you know, life mo life moves on." He's he's done a great job there, and. Um, when David Ray felt the same thing, he's like, you're, you're happy for people when they get to better their life. And some are in, in the in the hockey business, some are not. And, um, you know, the, the one thing that stays pretty constant is you, you, you create this rabid fan base here and you want the wild to be bigger than any one person. That um, I like to tell people that uh, in junior hockey that players come and go. You know, they, uh, they move on to college. Um, they get traded sometimes. Uh, obviously, here we don't do that very often. But players come and go, coaches come and go, staffs come and go. That um, you know, really, the Wenatchee Wild belongs to the people. I mean, the the Whites own it, and like I say, they've I've never had a better situation as far as uh, ownership. But really, these franchises, um, it's it's the people that put their, I guess their 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 heart into into the kids and. Um, that uh, we will have a game sometime next next September. We'll have a home opener here, and uh, whether this player is back or not, this coach is back or not, this radio guy is back or not, we all hope to be. 
but um, we're we're going to have a hockey game here, and uh, yes. you know that's 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 the that's that's the one of the beautiful things about having these franchises is um, is it's the the fans, the city that um, they they make them go and. Uh, yeah, I think that's that's exciting. Where I tell people all the time, we we will have a game next September, and um, like I say, hopefully, hopefully we're part of it. But uh, you know, the fans really take ownership of it. The 2016-2017 <clears throat> season has come to a close. A record-breaking season, both on a team level and on an individual level. The process is underway to begin the 2017-18 season, which is the 10th anniversary season for the Wenatchee Wild here in the Valley. And as Bliss just mentioned, this is Wenatchee's team. Embrace it, and we're honored to be the current stewards of this operation moving forward. You can stay in touch with the team all season long through our website, WenatcheeWildHockey.com, our Facebook page, our Twitter, which is at WenatcheeWild1. Now we've got a Snapchat, we've got Instagram, all of those things we expect to be out in the community throughout the summer. We'd love to see you. If you get a chance to stop by the office, come in and say hello. And we'll see you out there. And we'll be right back here with another edition of Call of the Wild. God willing, we'll be back here in <laughs> September to do it all again. Thanks to everyone for their help along the way. Even Randy Dawson, who's the man behind the camera who you can't see right now. Lucky for you. And also NCW Life for airing this program every Thursday night as part of Thursday Night Hockey. He's Bliss Littler. I'm Arch Ecker. Thanks very much. Have a great summer, everyone. You've been listening to Call of the Wild, the official weekly coaches show of the Wenatchee Wild, a presentation of the Wenatchee Wild Hockey Network.